Two big green arrows in a row, two free transfers. What could possibly go wrong? So before we get cracking with my game week 10 team selection, let's take a look at how it went in game week nine, as that'll color my opinion going into the next game week. Looking on paper, it all went really well. 92 points is another big green arrow. I've halved my rank yet again. So that's back to back green arrows that have halved my rank each time. So from what was 2.3 million going into the wildcard in game week eight, I'm coming out of it at around 570k, which is really good progress. I'm also very happy with my team structure so far, and I've got those two free transfers in the bank as well. So looking at my team, obviously the defense wasn't exactly amazing. Turner one point, Cash two, a doggy one, Burn with the only clean sheet there at all. But moving forward into my midfield and attack, that's where this team really stood out this week. So all seven attackers bagged points and I think I'm right in saying that every single one of them got at least one goal which is a ridiculous overperformance really no one would normally expect that to be the case but Salah with a brace obviously slightly fortunate to get the brace but still that's back-to-back -back braces Son with a goal assist Madison with a goal Bowen Gordon both with goals as well Haaland got his goal and Watkins obviously with a goal assist too that's a great performance. 92 points. Really happy with that. Slightly unfortunate not to get even closer to the 100 club with that a doggy clean sheet. But obviously he got taken off ever so slightly too early for that as well. Little bit frustrating, but overall back up near the top 500k now. So in a really good position to start attacking the weeks ahead and obviously two free transfers ready to go as well. So in the meantime, let's take a look at how my game week 10 is looking so far and what transfers I've got planned with those two free moves. So starting off with the defence, but first of all, it is important to mention that I've also got that 0 0.7 in the bank from my wild card. It was a very intentional decision to make sure I had the money for one specific move this week. But that move may or may not happen now with different changing chess pieces around the board. It could happen, but there are other options as well now. So I'm glad I've got the 0 0.7 in the bank, saving it for a rainy day. But there are other moves maybe I could make with it at the moment. So looking at defence and in goal to start with, I think last week was probably the last week for a while that I'd be starting Turner over Ariola. Ariola comes into a really good patch of fixtures now and I think is just fundamentally a better keeper. So Everton at home for West Ham is a decent enough fixture. Everton are pretty good on the underlying data, but they're certainly not as good as Liverpool are away from home um, for Nottingham Forest anyway. So I definitely prefer to be starting Areola there and probably for the weeks ahead as well. The one thing that is quite interesting to note here is Nottingham Forest's underlying XGC per 90 is actually far superior to West Ham's at the moment. So if you are going just purely based on the data, regardless of the fixtures, you might even be tempted to go with the Nottingham Forest keeper. But I don't think too many people are going to interpret it that that way and at the end of the day Everton are a much weaker attack than Liverpool are so more than happy to start Areola. Moving on to the defence specifically Cash at home to Luton again that is a fantastic fixture he'll probably start at right back again which is a little bit frustrating that he's not been getting more minutes at right wing but still he's a great option at just over five million now if you don't have him already maybe there's a decision to be made about whether or not you bother but the next three fixtures for Aston Villa are looking really good so Cash, very happy with. A doggy away at Palace. Now, a doggy's one player that I'm a little bit nervous about. Obviously, he came off with a slight knock in around the 55th, 57th minute last week. But Postacoglu in the post-match press conference did say that it was just precautionary. So if we hear anything about him training this week, I'll feel a lot safer with him in my lineup. Burn at, as the third starting defender. Again, Wolves probably a decent enough attack at the moment but it's good coverage for Trippier who looks likely to get some points and if Newcastle do get that clean sheet that covers me off there it's important to note this week on the bench I've got Aguerd at home to Everton now if a doggy was injured I might not need to make that transfer because I've got Aguerd there on the bench and could come in with a pretty strong fixture not massively confident in that double West Ham clean sheet I'm not sure about that so there is a transfer I could be making in defence this week that would shore up the fourth defender spot not just for this week but importantly for next week and the weeks ahead it gives me a better defender for 
the upcoming run. So let's take a look at that transfer now and see whether or not you agree with it. So the move I'd be looking at potentially making is moving Aguerd onto Simicast. Now Simicast I mentioned earlier on in the watch list this week and he's not a player I'm massively confident on at the moment but I think I've got enough confidence to have him as my fourth defender. I'm not sure I would as my regular third starting defender but having him rotating in and, in and out with a bit of defensive coverage as a fourth defender isn't too bad. Now, Aguerd isn't a bad option either. West Ham's fixtures are looking pretty tasty from now until game week 14, 15, I believe. But importantly, next week, they're against Brentford away from home, whereas Liverpool have much stronger fixture. And you've also got to consider the other defenders in my lineup as well. So you've got Burn and Adoggi, both with some pretty tough fixtures. Burn obviously going up against Arsenal and Adoggi at home to Chelsea. Now, I wouldn't mind playing maybe one of them, probably Adoggi for that attacking upside, but I don't really want to have to play both. Simicast obviously provides the option of Luton, which is a much stronger team to be playing from a defensive point of view. And because of Robertson's injury for the foreseeable, probably the next two months or so, Simicast should be fairly reliable to start for Liverpool. And they've got some great fixtures to come even after next week as well. So this move is a bit of a luxury transfer. I definitely don't need to make it, and especially not this week. But because I've got two free moves and because Simicast's price is rising quite quickly at the moment, it might not be a bad one just to get ahead of the curve, have him sat on the bench this week because I'm pretty happy with the three I'm starting. If a doggy's injured, he comes in for that. That's great. But it's more about next week. It's about having that better defensive coverage for some rougher fixtures next week and Simicast can come in and cover one of a doggy or burn. Let me know what you think of that in the comments below. I'm not sure it is the best move to make this week but because I've got two free transfers I could make this plus another so let me know in the comments below what you think. So moving on to the midfield and I'm really happy with this five at the moment overall. Obviously all of them got a goal last week so I can't really be complaining too much and all five of them have a good or good enough fixture this week. So starting off with where my armband is going at the moment and that is on Mo Salah. I think Mo Salah is a great captaincy shout. Obviously back-to-back -back braces, both of which had slight fortune about them. And a lot of Liverpool fans were saying that his performance last week was probably one of the worst ones they've seen of him for quite a while. But he still came away with two goals and that is probably the level that this guy is at at the moment. He looks in phenomenal form and his underlying data is also fantastic. Nottingham Forest are not a bad side by any means, but at home, at Anfield, I think he's the most reliable and the safest captain pick this week. So I'm pretty confident that I'm going to be putting the armband on him unless I potentially look at one transfer, which I'll show in a moment, that have possibly a better fixture and it could be a rival for the armband. But let's talk about that in just a moment's time. Moving on to the Spurs assets, Son and Madison have both been in phenomenal touch recently. Obviously both getting a goal against Fulham and Son has just been in very explosive form ever since he moved to that number nine position. Now, a lot of managers at the moment are considering whether to sell Son or Madison for maybe one of the Arsenal assets this week. And it's definitely something that I'm going to be thinking about myself as well. So we'll move on to the transfer in particular in just a moment. But for now, let's talk about whether or not Son or Madison is the easier sell. So I think personally, Madison is probably the one that should go out of the two. He'll He'll tick along all season long. I think he's a great asset and I think you don't need to sell him this week. Crystal Palace away from home is not a bad fixture by any means. But some of the Arsenal assets, they all have great fixtures, obviously. Sheffield United at home this week. Newcastle next week, not great. So maybe over the next two, you don't need to make this move. But then by game week 12, Arsenal's fixtures are really, really nice. And Spurs still are going through a pretty average run of fixtures. So if you want to attack the fixtures, if you're backing Arsenal to sort of get into gear with the fixtures ahead, then I think out of the two, I'm happier to lose Madison. Now, Son is just so explosive at the moment, playing out of position and probably on penalties. We don't know for sure yet. And Madison did say in a post-match press conference that it's down to whoever's feeling the most confident at the time. But I do think that he's probably got first refusal. He is the captain. He will want 
all of the goals as the centre forward as well. And he's been there for a long, long time. So I think he'll almost take authority away from the others. Now, we don't know that for sure. And it could be Madison, it could be Richarlison, but I probably say that Son is more likely. And even disregarding that, he's getting the best data out of all of the Spurs assets at the moment, the best underlying XG as well. And he's just looks so, so lethal up front for Spurs so far. I'm just very hesitant to get rid of him. So I'm happy to keep him this week, I think. And Madison is probably the guy that if I'm going to make a midfield transfer, is the one that I'd most likely look at. Now, looking at Bowen and Gordon, I don't think there's too much to say about either of them right now. Both of them have good fixtures this week. Everton at home for West Ham. I expect some goals there. And Bowen is in fantastic form as well at the moment. So very happy to own him for the next few game weeks. And Gordon, I think, is just a great budget budget enabler at the moment. Wolves away from home is a good fixture. Newcastle's fixtures in general do toughen up a little bit for the foreseeable. And I think three of the next five are pretty tough home games with the other two being Bournemouth away and Wolves away in two of the next three. So I'm pretty happy to hold him for those. And then maybe I make a decision in three or four game weeks time as to whether or not there's another budget enabler that I could be looking at. Cole Palmer, for instance, will run into some good fixtures in a few game weeks time, but the next six are not great. So I'm pretty happy to own Gordon for the time being, and I think he'll tick along really nicely. And it also means that I can afford moves elsewhere because he's so cheap. So let's take a look at the transfer I'm potentially looking at making in midfield, which I'm sure most of you can guess. But let's take a look at it anyway and figure out whether or not it's a prudent move ahead of game week 10. So no real surprises there. Obviously, I mentioned that Madison is probably the player that is on the chopping block this week in midfield. And the player I'd be looking at bringing in is Bukayo Saka. I've mentioned it on a few shows since the Game Week 8 wildcard. I very intentionally had that 0.7 in the bank for this move in Game Week 10. I was always eyeballing that Arsenal fixture swing in Game Week 10 because obviously Sheffield United at home is a fantastic game. And then, okay, Newcastle and 11, not great at all. But after that, they go straight into Burnley at home and the fixture run just continues after that. Bukayo Saka is also pretty regularly a 90-minute man. I don't, I don't think that we should start expecting rotation from him anytime soon. If he's fit, he starts. And if he's fit, he usually gets 90 minutes as well. Whereas we can't really say that about a lot of the other Arsenal assets at the moment. Martinelli, great explosive asset. A little bit like Hyunmin Son in the fact that he's head down towards goal and probably more explosive. But Bukayo Saka is more likely to get the 90 minutes, whereas Martinelli is getting subbed off early for the likes of Leandro Trossard, for instance. And because of what happened in midweek in the Champions League, Jesus did have a slight hamstring issue. Now, we don't know how long that will be an issue for. Arteta played it down. Jesus played it down. But if he misses even this week, then that makes Martinelli a slightly worse option. If Nketiah is in that centre forward role, they both play in very similar ways. Whereas Jesus will drop in, switch in and out with Martinelli. And it gives Martinelli more of a central focus, more of a goal threat when Jesus is in the team. So I think because of those two factors, I'm more confident on Bakayo Saka this week. But Saka has has had his own injury worries recently. He obviously missed a couple of matches recently as well, or at least one match with one 45-minute substitution as well. And Saka just hasn't looked quite right since coming back from the injury just yet. That being said, though, he's still ticking along really nicely. The underlying data is fantastic, and we know what he's capable of. So Saka, for me, seems like the simple move across from Madison. The fixtures are very much the catalyst for this move because Madison has done nothing wrong so far. But I'm kind of gambling on the fact that Arsenal's fixtures, especially those two home games against Sheffield United and Burnley, are so fantastic that you can kind of picture three or four goals in both of those games. And if there are, Bakayo Saka seems as likely as any other Arsenal asset to be getting those goals or at least involved in them. And he is still on some of the penalties. It feels like he's got first refusal on the penalties. And because he's been out injured, he might want the next penalty anyway, just to get him back up and running. 
So I kind of do fancy Saka. It gets me ahead of the curve as well. A lot of people on wildcard will want to go for Saka as well. So catches me up with them. But it gets me head, ahead of the curve where a lot of managers might hesitate doing it this week and do it in game week 12 for the Burnley fixture. Whereas I can then look at making other transfers because I've already locked in that move beforehand. On the other hand, though, Madison's still a great pick. I still expect him to tick along fairly nicely, despite the fixtures toughening up a slight bit from now on. So do let me know in the comments below whether or not you think that this is a good move. Who's going to score the more points, the most points over the next four or five fixtures out of Madison and Saka? Please, please let me know in the comments below who you're voting for, because it will help inform my decision going into game week 10. So finally this week, let's have a look at the forward line. And once again, there's not really too much to discuss. Haaland gets the vice captaincy at the moment. If I do bring in Bakayo Saka, then I'll probably switch it across to him. But I'm fairly confident on Salah being my actual captain this game week, nonetheless. So Haaland being my vice captain, I think against Man United, even away from home, that's a pretty good shout at goals. I think there are people out there that are going without Haaland. And I think this is one of the fixtures where you're kind of betting on him not exploding. And I think that's valid. He did blank away from home last year against Man United. But it is important to remember he got those he got the hat trick in the home game as well. So Man United as a team isn't a team that Man City or Haaland should be particularly scared of. And I don't think owners should be panicking about owning him this game week at all. So very happy to have Haaland. I still expect him to do well this week and then for the foreseeable. So I don't think there's any problems there for me personally. Watkins, on the other hand, could be potentially another captaincy shout this week. Luton at home is a great game. And even though Luton have solidified defensively since the first couple of game weeks, I still expect there to be goals in this game. Aston Villa have been in phenomenal form at home all season. In fact, I think they're 11 on the trot for wins at home. So this should be a game that Aston Villa will be very confident about winning. And if Aston Villa are confident of winning, you'd expect three plus goals based on the form they've been in recently anyway. And if they're getting two or three goals, then Watkins is as likely as anyone to be on the end of those. So very happy to own him. He is definitely a captaincy shout this week. But I think just because Salah is on penalties and Liverpool are just a slightly better team overall, I think that Salah is probably where the armband's going for me. But I can see the logic to Watkins' captaincy this week. I wouldn't be surprised to see quite a few managers going with him as their captain, as a slight differential, as a captaincy option anyway. And it is a good fixture at the end of the day. Luton at home is a better fixture than Nottingham Forest at home. So I can see the argument, but I'm backing the quality that Salah has this game week. But nonetheless, very happy to own that as my forward line, Haaland and Watkins. And Archer obviously nestles in nicely at second sub. I don't really foresee playing him anytime soon. But overall, really happy with my starting 11. There are a couple of transfers I could make. But do let me know in the comments below what your dilemmas are ahead of game week 10, how your side is looking ahead of the deadline. And I'll try to get back to as many of the dilemmas as possible before the deadline to help you sort out your team ahead of game week 10. So that's all from me this week. And hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel, that would be greatly appreciated. YouTube has been a little bit of a grind recently. I'm not getting a ton of views in the last few weeks. I do do this because it's a lot of fun. but Every little bit of encouragement I get just inspires me to create more and better content as well. So if you're enjoying the videos, please do remember to leave a like and subscribe because it really does make my day when you do so. In the meantime, though, I hope you all have a great game week 10. I hope your arrows are green and I'll see you as we prepare for game week 11 next week.